Welcome to Legal Literacy Series 6. In this episode, we are discussing about the role of witness in criminal law. This is the part 3 and in this we are discussing Indian Evidence Act where uh, a role of witness in open court would be discussed elaborately. The idea behind this presentation is to understand what happens in the court and how a witness has to face different tasks in the open court. So if, if Jago happens to be a witness or he has watched a happening of a crime, can he be a witness? Answer to this question is every person is competent to be a witness but there is one rider behind this if the person is unable to understand the questions and he is prevented from giving rational answers then he cannot be a witness now see understanding a question and inability to give rational answers should be in the opinion of the court so the court can take a final decision on this. Take this one inability. A person of tender years cannot be a witness, means a child cannot be a witness. But in the opinion of the court, if the child can understand the question and give rational answers, then he will be allowed. But if the court finds out that he cannot give answers, then he would be refused. So opinion of court is very important aspect. Similarly, a person with extreme old age cannot be a witness if in the opinion of the court he won't be able to give an answer. But between all these inabilities, a person with a speech impairment, he can be a witness even though he cannot speak whenever he gives an evidence with sign language, the court has to take down the sign language and record it as a uh, oral evidence. If a person is suffering from physical illness and mental illness which leads to a situation where that he cannot understand questions or give rational answers, he cannot be a witness. So if a Jago is not suffering from these inabilities, then he can be a witness. There is another interesting witness, he is known as accomplice. So accomplice is a person where he is involved in the crime, he is part of the crime but later on he decides to assist the police in the investigation and assist the court in coming up with the punishment. So he is basically uh, a mole in the gang who is assisting the court. Such person is known as accomplice and he can be a good witness. So. Whenever, because he is the person who has a complete knowledge of the whole incident and he is assisting the court in explaining those incidents. This person's testimony, this person's evidence can be a base for the conviction. But here again, there are so many judgments of the court which makes accomplice evidence an important evidence but may not be the best form of an evidence. Now let us come to examination of Jago, what happens in the open court. So once a Jago comes before a court and stands in the witness box, he would be examined. Now how the examination goes on, I will dedicate next three slides for that. So the first examination is examination in chief. So let us understand the situation in the court. There are two parties in the court party 1 and party 2. They are known by different names depending on civil, criminal and other cases. So party 1 has gone to a court saying that there is certain things, certain rights which needs to be protected which party 2 is trying to violate. So party 2 is in a denial mode, he says nothing such things have happened. So when they come before court, they come with a story which they are trying to convince the judge which is uh, as a true story and they want a favorable judgment based on the story. So how the story would be believed by the court as a true story. So party 1 
come with his set of witnesses and evidences and party 2 comes up with his own set of witnesses and evidence. So what party 1 is saying is supported by these witnesses stating that such things have really happened but whereas party 2 witnesses say such things does not happen. Now how the court functions is this way. Party 1 starts asking questions to his own witnesses trying to explain to the court that how this thing has actually happened. So basically the whole narration of the incident takes place in a question and answer format. Similarly, party two asks his own witnesses the questions denying happening of the event. Now when parties ask questions to their own witnesses, it is called as examination in chief. Similarly, in cross-examination, there are again same parties, but this time what has happened here is both have stated their own stories. Now the court gives a chance to discredit the story of the opposite party and prove that your story is the only true story. So now party 1 start asking questions to party 2. Similarly, party 2 starts asking questions to the witnesses of party 1 and in this questioning basically they are trying to prove that what witness is saying is not true, what witness is saying has flaws and it not worth to be believed. So basically they are trying to destroy the stories created by the opposite parties that is cross examination. Then finally, with all the damage that is being done by the cross examination, one chance is given to uh, restore the, uh, the story. So party 1 again call his witnesses and try to mitigate the damage done by the opposite party. Similarly, party 2 start asking questions to his own persons to avoid damage uh, to restore the story to the court. So this is how things function in the open court. Now I mentioned about cross examination. Now here is the rights, powers of the advocate while dealing with cross examinations and re examinations. So basically when examining the witnesses, the advocate can ask questions to check the veracity of the witness. So whether witness is telling the truth or not can be checked by asking questions. Similarly, questions can be asked to check the status of the witness, emotional status, whether he is emotionally stable to give answers, whether he is socially in a good status that he can be believed in stating the right answer. This is how the court functions. So while examining witness, there are attempts made by the advocates to discredit the witness or discredit the stories told by the witness. So how do you discredit the witness in cross examination? One, you injure the character of the witness, you damage the character of the witness, then the court starts doubting the integrity of the witness. You incriminate the witness in various other offenses by which the court raises doubt over his veracity. Penalty and forfeiture, ask him questions where he is involved in certain crimes, certain which attracts penalty or forfeiture that also helps in disbelieving the witness. And similarly, Proving that he what he is telling is a created concocted story also helps in discrediting the witness. These are the troubles which witnesses face in the open court, but with one exception. If a rape victim is standing in a witness box, that victim cannot be subjected to such examination. So again, you all must be understood the reason behind this and the kind of turmoil the victim had gone through.
to protect the victim this provision is been inserted so you have seen that the advocate enjoys a lot of power to destroy the credibility of the witness but his power is regulated by the court the court acts as a safeguard in protecting the witnesses so whenever a question is asked mainly when the question is unconnected question and the object behind that question is only to discredit the witness then the court follows certain guidelines what kind of questions are allowed and what kinds of questions which are not allowed now here when the question is on character of a witness trying to understand that whether the witness should be believed or not generally the court allows such questions many a times court doesn't allow a question which are too remote in time and doesn't serve the purpose of the case court refuses ask the advocate to go to next question and request the party not to answer those questions if the question is disproportionate so witness is called for a for a small fact to be proved in the court which is not that very significant for the case but advocate is coming out with all guns and attacking the witness there the, if the judge feels the questions are disproportionate to the importance of the witness then the court may ask not to answer those questions and stop the questioning unfavorable inference this is a very interesting one where the court if it thinks that the witness is trying to hide something that's why he is not answering witness validity can be questioned and that's why he is not answering so when the judge has already framed his mind that he is not worth to be believed then the judge will stop the cross examination ask the advocate to conclude his cross examination continuing with court as a safeguard here are the important duties of the court and power of the court uh, duties of the advocate and power of the court so duty of the advocate would be that he can ask the questions only on reasonable ground so if he is asking a question on the character of a witness he should have a reasonable ground to believe that the the witness is of a doubtful character and those reasonable grounds needs to be explained to the court if the court finds that the question is unreasonable so therefore the advocate functions based on reasonability behind the questions similarly the court would compel a party to answer those questions even if the party can be subjected to arrest prosecution and other criminal proceedings say for example a party comes before a court and advocate ask a question which can actually cause an arrest which can actually create a charge on other criminal proceedings but court compels the witness to answer those questions and also ensures that no arrest no prosecution and no criminal proceedings can be initiated against the witness now because the object of that witness presence in the court is to protect, to convict or to come up with uh, justice to a case and we restrict to the purpose of that only other things are not encouraged if the advocate goes on asking unreasonable questions and without any grounds or reasonable grounds then the court can report it to high court for suitable action against the advocate and most preferable uh, way of dealing with it is report it to the authority governing the profession of advocacy like state bar council and bar council of india they can take action against these erring advocates so this is how the whole uh, process goes on in the open court when jago appears in the court as a witness it's not an easy job it's a tough job to be a witness but being a responsible citizen and a part of a society we need to undergo this task and these tasks are very much necessary for administration of justice 
Thank you very much. Do like, share, comment and subscribe. Press the bell icon.